The Sons and Daughters Podcast. Discover and walk in the life that Jesus lives inside of you. Hosted by Andy and Tina Hayner, leaders of Full Speed Impact Ministry. Hi, welcome to the Sons and Daughters Podcast. I'm Tina Hayner, and this is my pure and holy husband, <laughs> Andy Hayner. And it's yeah, it's so good to be here with my pure and holy wife. Uh, we are not exactly joking, as a matter of fact, uh, because today we're going to have an interesting discussion about the identity of a believer, especially as it concerns sin, that um, we believe that the gospel is that we have been set free, not just from the guilt of sin, but from slavery mm-hmm. to it, um, and have been made into the righteousness of God. So, uh, brothers and sisters, thank you for joining us for the Sons and Daughters podcast, where we have um, interesting and exciting discussion talking about topics in the Christian life, uh, really from the vantage point of who you are uh, and the life that Jesus lives in us. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just talking to someone earlier this morning, And uh, I told him, I said, you know, one of the biggest revelations in my life was that I can't live the Christian life. Mm -hmm. That God never intended intended me to live the Christian life. It's not you just Uh, mucking it out. No. mm -mm. You know, I think a lot of Christians are out there, you know, reading their Bible and praying every day and trying Trying really hard. (laughs) Yeah, to apply Bible verses and to, you know, be the sort of person that the Bible talks about. Sure. Um, but it was amazing to me when I discovered that the whole Christian life is not you trying to integrate biblical philosophy into, into your mind your so that you can apply biblical principles uh, with your, your willpower and et cetera. It's, you know, it, it is actually that God planted the spirit mm-hmm. of the living Lord Jesus inside your spirit and you now need to learn how to cooperate, to trust in, to submit to uh, the, the, the activity, the life that Jesus lives in you. Um, and it's really not that hard. <laughs> it, is, it is a matter of ceasing from your own striving and trusting the presence and the power of Jesus Christ to live in in you and through you. Mm-hmm. And so we we're going to talk yeah. about that today. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, you know, I think of some of the, how simple it is, uh, some of the analogies Paul used of um, taking off mm-hmm. the old clothes and putting on new and, um, and walking. Mm-hmm. You just walk in the spirit. Yeah. Just as simple as that. Not, not very complicated. Mm-hmm. You know, one, one little aside that you bring up, uh, you know, one of the things that was an interesting part of our life, it was being in Turkey. And mm-hmm. what we discovered in Turkey is that a large portion of the population is functionally illiterate. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, not that they can't read, but that they just don't. Mm-hmm. It's not something that they do. Um, and so I was challenged with, okay, how do you disciple people? Right, that don't read. <laughs> right. The, the, the answer to their problems isn't read, read your Bible verse. every day. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, well, it was interesting because I kind of went back to the New Testament with new eyes and realized mm-hmm. that, you know, as, as important as the message of the gospel is and as important that the foundation of our faith is the scriptures, you know, hear me that say that, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, for a vast majority of church history, People. People couldn't read. Mm-hmm. They were mm-hmm. illiterate. Mm-hmm. So what was it that Jesus, the Apostle Paul, Peter, John made the uh, the center the of the Christian life? Was mm-hmm. it daily Bible reading? Mm-hmm. No, it was. It wasn't. It was Christ spirit, living knowing, in you. Mm-hmm. Knowing who's in you. That you actually have access to to the very presence and power of the living Lord Jesus. He didn't just come to save you from the guilt of your sin. He came to dwell in you to rescue you from the power of I'm sin. Just, um, right. um, so we don't have to do its bidding anymore. Right. We're not compelled. Exactly. By sin, we're compelled by the love of God, yeah. which is in us. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very common for believers, uh, especially coming from a Baptist background, (laughs) um, to have it firmly fixed in their mind Mm. that their identity is this. I'm a sinner saved by by grace. 
Um, and there's some things that are wrong with a believer who's maturing in the Lord, continuing to see themselves that way. Say that and declare that over themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I agree. Um, it's, uh, I was a sinner. I mean, you have to get to that point that you realize you, you sin against mm -hmm. God. I was a sinner saved by grace is what I would say. Now I remember, um, uh, years ago, uh, meeting with some homeschool moms and, um, and and uh, one of the one of the ladies was uh, said that very thing. She mm -hmm. she's like, you know, and just struggling with this, and you know, I just, I, but I'm just a sinner saved by grace. And I looked at her, kind of like, hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, am I getting into this or not? And I was like, are you really? Is that what the scriptures really say of you? Mm -hmm. And she thankfully had a really humble, open heart, and she said you don't think so? Tell me more. <laughs> and, uh, and it was that tell me more, you know, and just being able to point her to scripture. And you're not disagreeing with the saved by grace no, part. No, absolutely. And not even really the center. I would disagree with, I am right. I, you know, I was, you know, there, there's you, a part that plays. You go back and look at Romans, uh, three, uh, and Romans five, where it talks about that, uh, Romans five, actually, while, while we were, were yet, yet sinners, mm -hmm. we were yet we sinners. Were. Mm -hmm. Christ died for us. Thank God you, saved Jesus. us. Thank you, Jesus. The only yeah. people that, that Jesus comes to save are sinners, are sinners right? Mm -hmm. it's not the hell. But what then becomes of our nature mm -hmm. and our identity after we are saved, how does he save us? Did he have two natures? Or just one. Mm -hmm. um, and so that that is part of, of what Christians have wrestled with. Mm -hmm. um, and what I believe the scriptures come out to, with is that we have been given a new nature. Mm -hmm. We have, we possess only one nature. Right. However... That doesn't deny the fact that there is an old nature, but the reason it's old is because it's not you anymore. Right, it's, right, not, right. it's not yours. We're done with that. Exactly. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. there is still uh, this. There is still the power mm -hmm, of sin mm -hmm. to contend with, but it's no longer part of who you are right. in your essence. You know, there's um, you. You were talking to me the uh, other day about reading something about Watchman Nee. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember from reading that also with the normal Christian life. And um, you'll have to quote it, but it, it has to has mm -hmm. to do with that. That. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why people get confused is right. because of this very thing that it's something like Jesus came and saved. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Why don't you say it? So yeah, so the, it's he, the the blood of Jesus saves us. Sa saves us from sin, mm -hmm. from from guilt, from and justifies us. Right. But it's the the presence, the spirit of Jesus that saves us from the power of sin. Right. Right. Um, and so right. both think... of those two always come together. Mm -hmm. You never get forgiven of your sins unless you also receive the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. um, when you mm -hmm. put your faith in Jesus Christ, He does doesn't just forgive you mm -hmm. and give you a new status in heaven and doesn't change the fundamental mm -hmm. core Nature. of mm -hmm. who you are. Right. And I think people get confused because we tend to go by what our experience is. And so yeah. if they fall back into a sin or whatever, well, then I must be, that must be my nature, yeah. that dual nature. I must go back to that. But no, I mean, there, the spirit is doing a work. A I had, present work. You know, this. I think a lot of people who came to know Christ at um at an as an adult. So you've already established some sin patterns. patterns. Habits, this was me. Bad habits. Mm -hmm. I I ran for about six months on the joy and the gratitude mm -hmm. of being forgiven and mm -hmm. having God in my life and being in and, and uh, gonna end up in heaven when I die. Mm -hmm. Um but then, you know, some old habits creep up or you, the Holy Spirit begins to shine his light as you get in the things Word. Things you were even unaware of. that you were <laughs> totally unaware of. Yeah. And then if no one gives you the good news, 
that you don't live by your own power or your own nature. It's not just you trying to apply Bible verses to live differently. I mean, good grief, if I was any good at living up to Bible verses, I wouldn't have needed Jesus. In the first place. (laughs) Yeah. And not only do we need Jesus to die on the cross to forgive us of our sins, Mm -hmm. we need his presence and power to regenerate us, to make us new on the inside with the nature of God. And that comes with the resurrection. Yes. and he didn't just die for the sins. He overcame it, overcame everything that tries to overcome yeah. us, sin and death and all that, yeah. all the punishment. You know, one of, uh, mm-hmm. one of the Bible verses that really began to open up this to me was Romans 5.10, and it says, For while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son. Now how much more will we be saved by his life? Now mm-hmm. that's a that's an amazing thing mm-hmm. because what and it stopped me because I was like we we're often preached that we're saved by, by the death, death of Jesus mm-hmm. we're, we're saved Shed by blood. his death mm-hmm. but this was saying something different not only are we reconciled forgiven washed mm-hmm. by his death but now by his life we're actually saved from the power and slavery to sin that was our lot in life. And, and it was amazing because for as long as I was telling myself, well, I'm just a sinner saved by grace, I was uh, ignorant of the supply, the full supply of the full gospel. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I was pretty much trying to live on my own power. I'm and, aware that you have a divine nature, like Peter talks about. <laughs> I read the verses. But I didn't understand it. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. Because, you know, it's just sort of was trumped by my experience because my experience was my conscience was very aware, mm-hmm. you know, that uh, of sin in my life, of continuing mm-hmm. sin and struggle and desires to break free. Um, so it doesn't really happen just automatically. Mm-mm. We have to see certain things, believe certain things. And you got forgiven mm-hmm. when you mm-hmm. believed on Jesus for his blood to cleanse you from all your sin. Um, but there's other aspects to the gospel. You know, Paul doesn't stop his gospel in Romans 3. Mm-hmm. He goes on Romans 4, 5, and he begins to introduce the life, the saving life of Christ, and then gets into Romans 6. And this is where the rubber starts to meet the road mm-hmm. is because he says now, you know, some of you are going to say, what are you saying? You know, so now that uh, grace has triumphed over sin let's and sin let's rain. continue to sin mm-hmm. so that uh, grace can abound all the more. Mm-hmm. And he goes, you guys don't understand this, what, mm-hmm. you know, whatsoever. Uh, no, not don't you understand that when you're baptized, when you're united with Christ, you're baptized into union with him. Mm-hmm. So you not only did he die on the cross, you, you died, died on the mm-hmm. cross. Amazing. Uh, mm-hmm. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 says mm-hmm. the same thing. I have been crucified with Christ. It's yeah. no longer I who live, but exactly. Christ who lives in me. Mm-hmm. In beginning to see that when because of what Jesus did, he actually, the reason he had to become flesh is he he was uniting himself organically to our humanity mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um the same way that when when we receive Christ we receive his spirit right so that we can actually participate in Christ's life mm-hmm. he actually took on Adam's flesh and became the last Adam so that when he died this may be hard to understand the whole human race died in him. Adam's race was over. That was the last Adam that God ever saw. And this kind of gets into the timelessness of God, you know, him being the alpha and the omega at the same time. He's not going to be the omega. He's already the end. Right, right. I mean, the book of Revelation is in your Bible. Right. So somehow God is outside of time, and this whole thing has played out in front of him. Mm -hmm. Right, right. (laughs) And that, that's, a, that's, that's an amazing, amazing thing. <laughs> well, somehow, and think of it this way. I, I like to tell people this. You were on Noah's Ark and so was I. Mm-hmm. And, and the reason I can prove the that to you, because guess what? If inside, how you were inside of Noah mm-hmm. or one of his sons, that's right? Insane. As a seed, you were inside of them. They are great, 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 great grandfathers, right? Right. So if the, that Ark would have sunk, 
the whole human race would have died mm -hmm. in him. Well, guess what? Jesus Christ is the creator of the whole earth, the heavens and the earth. He, he is the sustainer of all things as the Son of God. And when he humbles himself to enter into the human race and to take on hum, human life, Mm -hmm. and to set aside the exercise of his divine life without stopping to be God. He's fully God, mm -hmm. but yet he's not exercising his divine prerogatives or divine power. Now he's walking among us. Guess what? That baby laid in a manger is the oldest human being that has ever lived. He is the head of the human race. He outlives Adam. So mm -hmm. when Adam fell and was taken captive. The whole human race was taken captive. Now Jesus is the last Adam. So when he goes to the cross, he's carrying you and me inside of him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why is that important? Why is that important? Well, when, because it's not just the sins that we do that are the problem. Um, our nature was corrupted and taken slavery. Our flesh and blood was right. taken sl captive to sin. The whole sin. thing needed to be taken care of. You know, mm -hmm. Jesus called the the devil the prince of, or in Paul did too, the prince of the power of the air. Mm -hmm. There is a there is a life that you and I were born with that breathes air, and that life mm -hmm. is corrupted and twisted and a slave to sin. Mm -hmm. But here's the cool thing about it: when Jesus died on the cross. He broke that slavery. He he by by the whole human race dying in him. That's Second Corinthians five fourteen. I think it says. Therefore, when Christ Dying died, all died, all died, mm -hmm. all died. So that those that live, so that those who live, live no longer live for themselves, but for Him. Amen. Mm -hmm. And and that's the neat thing is that as far as God's concerned, the whole human race died when Christ did. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what reconciles the human race to God. You know, why did you even let them exist? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, God is satisfied. Jesus brought us all to the cross yes. and offered his life, his mm -hmm. spotless life in our place. Wow, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Lived for us a perfect life, died for us mm -hmm. the sacrificial death that God required and then rose from the dead to start a brand new creation mm -hmm. in Christ so mm -hmm. that when you call in the name of the Lord, his life, his resurrection life, that spotless, sinless, blameless, Perfect. free from sin, sin could never get its grip on him. That life was planted inside of you mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. your life. Now that's your identity. God identifies that life that he planted in you as who you are. Yes. <laughs> so that's the cool. So that's why we can't say, I am a sinner. Right. You Same were words. a sinner. You were. And he loved you while mm -hmm. you were a sinner. So now it says that uh, we need to reckon ourselves to be dead, dead to, to sin, sin in Christ and alive, and alive to, to God. God. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. are now living in the presence of Almighty God. By whose life? Christ's, Christ's life. life. Mm -hmm. And so God looks in his son and sees you and sees me. And we need to see the same thing. And we yeah. and, about ourselves yes. and about one another. That yes. changes everything. <laughs> Amen. And and honestly, this is this is what you have to see. And now it's no longer you striving to get free from sin. It's right. you recognizing and appreciating and, and glorifying God for the what He's done to set you free. Mm -hmm. Because the Correct. life of Christ in you is so free. And when you when you embrace that as your life and your identity and uh and and just walk in that. You know what? You will find that spontaneously your behavior, mm -hmm. your attitudes begin to change. Mm -hmm. You know, I've kind of observed this too when we talk about <clears throat> knowing this and believing this about yourself and about others so much in our parenting. Um, you know, uh, times that you see something in your child and you call that out, um, and then if they act contrary to that, um, you could scold them or correct them or whatever, but when you help them understand, wait a minute, that's not who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, so for example, um, 
you know, maybe whining, your children whining, 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 um, complaining, that kind of thing. But um, when you call out times that uh, that they are patient, they wait patiently or something like that, or, or they could have complained about a situation, but they didn't. And you say, that is who you are, that, you know, you exercised a lot of patience there, you know, you were, um, that was really good. And the times that they do whine, gently reminding them, I, you know, that's just not who you are anymore. I, I don't understand that because you, you know, you're not a whiner. You're, you're a strong person that, that, um, that deals with this and, 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 and doesn't have a breakdown and just start complaining to one. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that is, it just is so effective with children. You know, I, again, done both, you know, the scolding and the other, but there's just something about speaking out, this is who you are. And they rise to that. Yeah. And I, our father, heavenly father does that with us. This is who I see you. This is who you are. Um, and this is, this is what you're, and so you rise to it. This is how I'm going to act that out. And, and it doesn't, it's not even the straining effort to try hardly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, um, uh, I was watching a, a video by Dan Moeller, one of my favorite preachers, um, and he was talking specifically how um, this understanding of the gospel affects the way that we parent. You know, no longer sh should or no, we should never be correcting our children mainly, you know, mainly because we're frustrated. Correct. If you're, if you're mm -hmm. correcting your kids just to maintain your own personal comfort and ease, it will always, no matter whether there's biblical principles backing you for the need to correct mm -hmm. your child or mm -hmm. not, the energy, the, whether you're uh, coming at your kids in the energy of selfish flesh mm -hmm. or the grace of the gospel is completely different. Mm -hmm. And so God's the same way is he's mm -hmm. not correcting us because he's aggressive and frustrated with us right. and can't stand it when we do that. And if you do that one more time, <laughs> I'm my like gosh, explode. I'm just going to, you know, you're going to lose your job. You know, I'm mm -hmm. gonna, I got to get your attention. Something, you know, he's mm -hmm. not that way. Mm -hmm. And some of us have been raised that way. So it's really hard for us to hear mm -hmm. the gospel. Um, but the good news is that, yes, God disciplines his children. But mm -hmm. if you look at Hebrews 12, the first child he disciplined was Jesus Christ. Right. He doesn't discipline us because he's angry at our sin and trying to get you know spank us until we stop. Or rub our nose in it. Or Jesus had like no that. sin. Mm -mm. Yet, yet in, he was disciplined. Yet he went through discipline because he was a child. Mm -hmm. And we, following the apostle mm -hmm. of our faith, mm -hmm. we're also being prepared in this world. See, what what Jesus went through in this world was preparing him for his eternal status. Mm -hmm. As Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Are yes. there any verses where, you know, maybe Paul talks about how trials now are are uh, are preparing us for who we are going to be for all Many eternity. Many of the apostles, not just Paul, yeah. Peter and James, mm -hmm. they all talk about it. Mm -hmm. I think uh, what I was thinking of is 2 Corinthians chapter 3 or 4, where it talks about these light and momentary, momentary afflictions, afflictions. don't compare with the weight of glory. Because, Absolutely. Because they are mm -hmm. producing in us an eternal weight, weight of glory. Mm -hmm. So for every lash and beating and shipwreck and Hardship all the stress that Paul went through. Mm -hmm. Paul recognized that, you know what, in this life, this is the only time I'm going to have to suffer for Jesus. Mm -hmm. But every ounce of suffering that I can do for him now is going to be yield an eternal reward mm -hmm. that's so outlast it because you're going to, you know, it's kind of like you and I've been through a lot as a married couple. <laughs> and the longer we've been married, the more we've been through, the more we can look back at things that were a hard time and a difficulty and, and look back at them and realize, you know what, we went through a lot for each other. It like builds mm. our love. It's like our marriage is becoming so more, so much more glorious <laughs> now sure. than it was at the beginning, you mm -hmm. know, right. same thing, you know, that you really know how much you, how much you love someone mm. by how much you're willing to, to suffer, suffer for them. Mm -hmm. right. And this is our opportunity to worship through all mm -hmm. the trials, through all the tribulations. You're never, this is it. You're never going to have mm -hmm. another chance to suffer mm -hmm. for Jesus. There will never be another opportunity. 
and I'm not sure exactly how this connects with our theme, but it, it is definitely <laughs> uh, something that the Lord, I think, wants to encourage some people with. Maybe sure. you're going through something, something right hard. now. Something hard, yeah. Um, and you're wondering, you know, what's the purpose? Listen. Is may, it worth it? Yeah, is it worth it, et cetera. Listen, you mm-hmm. need to understand, brothers and sisters, walking that hard road of obedience, that narrow way of life, uh, it it is the narrow way, but it and you carry a cross while you walk it. But brothers and sisters, praise the Lord! You are rewarded for every step of obedience, mm-hmm. and and when you have that step, and it brings a, a thorn or and a whip and a difficulty mm-hmm. uh, from persecutions or just the trials of obeying Jesus right. in this world. Because yeah, obeying Jesus brings its own hardships. Because <laughs> sometimes our persecution isn't coming from brothers mm-hmm. and sisters with flesh and blood; it's coming mm-hmm. persecution from the attacks Attack of the enemy. The enemy. Sure. Well, guess mm-hmm. what? You get rewarded for for standing in that place of obedience mm-hmm. even when you're attacked by the enemy. Yep. Mm-hmm. So Thank you, Lord. <laughs> well back to uh to freedom from sin. Um so Romans six tells us that we need to realize, reckon ourselves to be dead to sin. Mm, and alive to and God. alive to God. And the neat thing about it is Death solves everything, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. w- there are no dead people getting tempted. No, right? No, that's it. There, you know, you don't. There's no preachers in graveyards. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> it's over at that point. Right. Um, but we're not just dead to sin; we're alive unto God. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he gets he kind of illuminates that a little bit more in Romans eight. But in between, he's mm-hmm. left with this. Uh, conundrum. Okay, so if we're dead to sin, uh, what exactly is going on? Why do I do the things I that don't I don't want to do, do etc.? Mm-hmm. Well, it's interesting. Um, there's been a lot of debate through church history. Is you know how to understand Romans seven? seven. <laughs> is is Paul talking about himself? Is he talking about uh, this is the normal Christian life? Is this uh, you know so we're just Our always going battle. to be constantly mm-hmm. struggling with sin? Or is this uh, an unbeliever, a pre, uh, mm-hmm, a, a mm-hmm. pre Christ uh, Jew, or whatever? And to be honest with you, I think we're getting way too theological technical. and technical. Mm-hmm. I believe my understanding of this is that that this can be the experience of anyone, uh, whether you're an unbeliever mm-hmm. or a believer. If you choose, if you try to obey God and fulfill His will, <laughs> um. Without being, uh, without your eyes fixed on Christ, uh, here's the thing that was really interesting: is that you look, it, Paul's in what Galatians two twenty. He says, uh, "So it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me." Well, in Romans seven, you have the same thing. In Romans uh, seven seventeen, he says, "So now it's no longer I who do it, but sin who dwells within me." Right. So it's either. Jesus doing it through you or sin doing so, it through you. He, yeah, and then verse 18 says, For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is my flesh. Mm-hmm. So here's mm-hmm. the neat thing about it is that when Paul talks about flesh, he talks about our humanity enslaved by sin apart from the, the Spirit That's of God. Right. But uh, so listen, you, listener, believer, <laughs> you're never doing what you want That's right. ever. That's what Paul <laughs> is talking That's the about. Point. You're mm-hmm. always either obeying, obeying sin, sin or, or you're obeying, obeying Christ. Mm-hmm. One of those two powers. You don't have your own spiritual nature. You were created to participate mm-hmm. in the na- the spiritual nature mm-hmm. of God. Mm-hmm. But in the absence of that, Another spiritual nature is at work, and that yes, is in, in, right, mm-hmm. and that's the power of sin. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so here's the cool thing about it: when when you receive Christ, His nature comes to dwell in you, it, um, and that is your now now your nature. You're no in that power supersedes it breaks the law of gravity so to speak thank goodness yes and and that's where he goes on to in you know uh, well you know one of the things in before i get to romans 8 romans 7 used to really frustrate me because it it (laughs) it described my my experience so perfectly Perfectly. Mm -hmm. you know well, you know, who will, do, and then Paul gets telling you, who's going to deliver me? And then yeah. he goes, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ. Uh, and and I'm like, Paul, why you were just going to answer my question. Who's going to deliver me? How do I get free from this conundrum of, of 
trying to do God's will. And here's the cool thing about it is if you look, he said, you know, when I want to do God's will, then evil's right there right with there me. With me. Mm -hmm. The evil is this, you're trying to be the source of doing the will of God. Mm -hmm. I, when I want to do it, that is the trap over and mm -hmm. over. The, mm -hmm. When I want to do You it. are not the mm -hmm. one who can live the Christian mm -hmm. life. And so even as a Christian, when you get a new heart, and you, now you want to do the will of God, you have to learn how it happens. You don't do the will of God in and of yourself. It's Christ living in you mm -hmm. and through you mm -hmm. that can live in victory and freedom from mm -hmm. sin. So as long as you're just saying, oh, okay, yeah, God, you want me to be patient? Sure. Oh, I'll be patient now. Good luck with that. <laughs> God's plan is not for you to be patient, but mm -hmm. his plan is to fill you so much with Jesus. Mm -hmm. How does that happen? Well, that happens through a lot of prayer and communion, really, just mm -hmm. faith and keeping your eyes fixed on him. Mm -hmm. And then you Get yourself out of the way. Let him live through you. Mm -hmm. This amazing, patient Lord. Mm -hmm. Just be filled with him. Keep your eyes fixed on him, and then mm -hmm. it happens. So when we want to, um, when uh, we want to obey God, does that mean that we're going to have this undercurrent of I really don't want to do this? You know, yeah. is there always is there always going to be this? pull in this tension of, I really don't want to do this, but I want to obey God. So yeah. So <laughs> what, what here, do we do with those feelings? Yeah. So you're, you may have those feelings, but here's the good news is that as you make progress with this, it's kind of like a plane lifting off, right? Mm -hmm. When you first recognize, okay, I have a power in me that is greater than gravity. It lifts. Mm -hmm. it, it, the, the power of lift and thrust, right? Mm -hmm. The power of the resurrection Lord, uh, the resurrected Lord, the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling within you. And you learn how to begin to access that. And it's very simple. It's simply, it, it's done through communion. That's how God's, not not through like not the, the way for, right, but, but fellowship. Mean, fellowship um, with the Lord, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Communing with God. Mm -hmm. uh, and that you just learn to take the life that's in Christ and let that be your life. It nurtures you and fills you. Mm -hmm. um, that said, you can gain momentum, but at first you you really are breaking the power that you've lived under your entire life mm -hmm. in a lot of areas so there's some and, and, and there's a lot of shaking you can feel the pull you know like mm -hmm. i don't know if you if anybody's Forming if you've flown but an airplane, you yeah when it. you're taking off man you feel the gravity pulling you mm -hmm. down you feel the the, the, the power of the the thrust the g-force but then once you get up to plane Mm -hmm. It just feels like this is normal. Mm -hmm. The good thing about it uh, is that you can get to the place where walking in the Spirit, the awareness of God's presence uh, in you and just cooperating with Him becomes your new normal. Right. Um, more feels more natural. Like when you first jump into a swimming pool, <laughs> You're, you're very aware of changing from one atmosphere to another. Mm -hmm. But after a few minutes in the pool, you become mm -hmm. used to the water, and that becomes your new normal. And getting out of the pool you feel the feels air. different. Mm -hmm. It's gotten to the place for me now, thankfully, you know, for a long time, where walking in the Spirit feels normal. But mm -hmm. if I step out of the spirit, it is like a burst of cold, cold air. air. Mm -hmm. It's like, whoa, you know, and, and God uses just that awareness of his um, empowerment within to honestly be a speaking to us, a guidance mm -hmm. to us. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when we were getting coming back from we came back from Turkey and we were in our mind, my mind, getting ready just to, to do to a quick back. turnaround. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every time I walked over to start sit down and fill out the paperwork to do a quick turnaround to go back, it was like the spirit, you know, I felt like Bugs Bunny Roadrunner when the wily e. coyote runs off the edge of a cliff. I just felt like my insides just dropped Drop. out. I felt empty inside. And so I stepped away from it. I was like, okay, God, I, I, won't, I won't do that now. I thought, you know, maybe it's a bad time and whatever. Mm -hmm. I did it again. The same thing happened. And so, so this finally was like, okay, what, Lord? You mm -hmm. know, and I'm listening. You got my attention. Yeah. <laughs> and, he, and the word came to me, stay in Ephesus. 
And I knew what that meant. Mm-hmm. You know, Paul, just the same way that Timothy, you know, had followed Paul and had an apostolic vision because of following Paul on the mission field and had that equipping uh, that my assignment Those. was America. Mm-hmm. It was to stay here, to mm-hmm. pastor, mm-hmm. Um, to be a minister here in the, in the U.S. And so I, I pastor with a with an apostolic vision. You know, I've got the world on my heart, but, <laughs> but the key to the world is these, these the believers disciples. right here locally mm-hmm. and seeing the mm-hmm. church. Church, uh, become a living display of, uh, of Jesus Christ. So mm-hmm. anyway, so back to your original question, mm-hmm. you know, what do you do with those feelings? That's part of where the Word of God helps us to discern between flesh and spirit, mm-hmm. uh, between soul and spirit even, because in, in, this is what you need to understand, is that believer, you are a spirit, that is your, the, who, you who are. you are. You have a soul that's in, in a, body, a body, okay? Mm-hmm. So before, you were simply dead spirit with a soul, soul and a body trying to somehow satisfy those spiritual desires that are imprinted on you. But as soon as you received Christ, you became born again, alive in, in the, the spirit, spirit of Jesus mm-hmm. Christ, fused with your spirit and became the life of your spirit. It's very life. Yes. No life apart from him. So when you did now, sin continues to operate through our physical body, our flesh. Um, and But righteousness is what abides in our spirit. And so we have to learn to access uh, the life that's in the spirit of Christ through our soul by turning our soul to him by you know, it says in Romans 10 you know whoever calls on the name of the lord mm-hmm. will be saved but if you look it says you know and he supplies the riches of his salvation to all those who call on his name so listen don't just get saved in heaven you know when you go die and go to heaven mm-hmm. access those riches of being free from sin of being mm-hmm. righteous and new wow simply just call on his name do that in the faith that he lives inside of you. So you're not calling on him. Something outside like an, of yourself. Like an orphan calling for a father or mother that they don't have that's abandoned them. Mm-hmm. Jesus said, I won't leave you like that. That's not how we pray. Mm-mm. We pray as sons. How did Jesus pray? He said, my father living in mm-hmm. me. I'm living in my father. He had an invisible communion with the father that he's now hooked us up with. And he said, you know, as I abide in my father... So you abide in me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Same thing. Jesus didn't live by his life. He lived by his Father's life in mm-hmm. him. He said, I don't do anything apart from the Father, from what I see my Father do. Mm-hmm. And everything that he did, his actions and his words, were an outflow from invisible communion that he was having with his Father in the Spirit. Mm-hmm. And brothers and sisters, it's not hard for the Father to be holy <laughs> or for the Father to heal or for the Father to love and to be gracious to yeah, sinners. Right. Um, it's not hard for Jesus to do that in us either. No. He's the same. Yes. <laughs> Yesterday, today, and forever, he's going to do that. And the more we just allow who he is to saturate our hearts, mm-hmm. the more free we, we get um, in darkness from other people or from circumstances. It just Affects doesn't get in there. Or yeah. or less. Mm-hmm. Right. It's swallowed up by the light. Yeah. yeah. I would say, you know, there's a lot of aspects to that. Um, but in general, that's the important thing. Now, what happens with how should a believer then uh, step into their, back into their identity if they realize, you know, I did sin or mm-hmm. I do have, mm-hmm. um, you know, I do have issues. I have character issues, you know, like you don't know the home I grew up in and blah, blah, blah. Sure. Well, guess what? You've been put into a new home. Mm-hmm. You <laughs> have been, a new daddy. You've been rehomed. You've mm-hmm. been adopted by mm-hmm. your heavenly father. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But what do you do? So mm-hmm. this is where putting off and putting and on is so, so important. important. How do you do that? Like, well, and I think, that. I think just, again, fundamentally, 
um, you know, not identifying yourself by that problem, you know? Yeah. So yeah. let's say an anger I, problem. I, I anger know. problem. Yeah. That I'm, I'm an angry person, you know, and, and that kind of thing. Or I just have no patience or, you right. know, people say, say these, things these things about things. themselves. Right. And it's like, if you have Christ, you have patience, yeah. right? If you have Christ, you have peace. If you have Christ, you have self-control. If, if you have that issue with anger and stuff. And so, you know, um, and sometimes you have to kind of retrain semantics and, and purposely say, I'm, I'm not going to say that or so, believe that about myself, that, that I am an angry person. So let's do a little bit of a role play. Mm-hmm. Let's say you're a growing believer who has, before, you know, as you came to know Christ, you had uh, consistently just outbursts of mm-hmm. anger, mm-hmm. getting offended, getting touchy, rage, and, rage and that kind of mm-hmm. thing. Um but God's now begun to show you in his word, mm-hmm. you know, that's put off anger. Jesus. That's and that's not who you are, mm-hmm. right? Um, but you just had a really bad interaction mm-hmm. with, you know, your your husband or a boss or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. And you're convicted about it. Mm-hmm. As a believer, mm-hmm. you you're convicted. Mm-hmm. Walk us through right. the putting off and the putting on. Right. Like, how do you how do you do that with God? How do you pray? Right. Well, I think I think the Lord invites us. You know, confess, agree with me about that. That that's not right, and that that's not who you are. Confess mm-hmm. your sin to Him, and He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So, yeah. Um, while you don't identify it, when it does happen, um, you you have the humility to. Um, acknowledge it, um, but God, you've, you know, you've defeated this. You've set me free and this isn't who I am, but, but Jesus in me and his self-control and his love, mm. you know, and so um, receive, you know, confessing and receiving the forgiveness of God um, and then allowing him to, you know, oh, I got to try better. No, I mean, maybe you're more aware, but um, allowing him to, it that next time or whatever situation you find yourself in, okay, no, Lord, you're in control. Your response, what do you say to this? How do you respond? Um, and I allow you, you know, you taking those thoughts captive mm. and allowing him to put thoughts there, yeah. allowing him to speak what he wants to speak through you. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you don't, you don't have to n- not acknowledge it, but you can be free of it by being forgiven, and you can and you can then turn your attention to right. who he is and what he wants to do in you. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, for mm-hmm. me, I used to just beat myself up. Mm-hmm. You know, no need you know, to go down the shame and, and, and guilt then, road. <laughs> then, I would, then I would start analyzing myself. Why do I do that? Blah, blah, blah. And I would just have my eyes on myself, and it mm-hmm. would take me a couple of days sometimes to get, to get back, mm-hmm. get over myself. Um, you know, mm-hmm. it's almost as if we're so used to our relationships hinging on our behavior mm-hmm. and being able to just get everything right. And it's just so good to know that uh, the foundation, but here's what began, I became aware of, mm-hmm. is that there was a, always a part of me that didn't cooperate with that sin. There was a part of me mm-hmm. that was pulling back and that was saying, no, no you know, I don't, that, want to. You don't mm-hmm. give into that. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what's neat is I realized, wait, I could never sin with my spirit. Mm-hmm. And I realized, mm-hmm. wait, that, OK, there's a part of me that really just doesn't live in this. That There's a part of me already free, doesn't agree right. with it. It's, the, it's my nature now because there was stuff, honestly, that um, before I came to know Christ, I wouldn't feel convicted about it. Man, I'd feel great. You know, I'd brag about it. You know, mm-hmm. like, whoa, you guess what happened to me this weekend? Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but after coming to know Christ, my nature was changed. My heart was changed. But sometimes the programming of sin in my old man. So I had to learn to not identify myself with who I always was but to identify mm-hmm. myself as God does in Colossians 3, 4, what it says, when Christ who is That's your right. life is revealed. Mm-hmm. Wow. Then you're going to be revealed with him in glory. You know, God already sees Christ as your life. Christ mm-hmm. is already glorious. Guess what? Mm-hmm. Romans 8 says, God, those he foreknew, he eventually, right, gets down through the what predestined mm-hmm. and called and justified. Those are the ones he has glorified. glorified. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, you, the same way that Jesus in his humanity had to learn okay. from the Father who he was mm-hmm. in eternity, and that's how he lived. He lived mm-hmm. out of who he was to the Father in eternity. He just manifested that in time. 
you and I need to get to know ourselves in Christ and mm -hmm. get to know who God made us so that we can live no longer us, but really just receiving and trusting the con continual flow of his holy, perfect life that is now somehow yours. <laughs> it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And so if you allowed sin to reign in your mortal body, put it off. This is, this is how I do. I say, I put that off. That mm -hmm. anger is not mine. It does not belong to me. It will not reign over me because I am free from it in the name of Jesus That's Christ. Right. And then I put on Christ, right? Mm -hmm. Christ is my life and I, I receive and put on his, his patience. patience. It dwells in me. And, and by faith, I receive mm -hmm. that and put that on. And I do it verbally. Yeah, um, that helps. You, you yeah, know. verbally to say it, say it out loud. <laughs> yes. Um, and it's so important. Mm -hmm. And over time, and it doesn't have to take a long time, once you understand the gospel, mm -hmm. you can get established in this mm -hmm. quickly. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thinking, too, I was talking to a friend today and just breaking off, like we mentioned, just um, anything that is guilt and accusation is the voice of the devil yeah. and just, and, and, you know, and the, the truth is of the matters, you don't have to receive it, no. you know? So, um, even in our mess ups, you know, guarantee the, uh, the enemy of our souls is going to dig mm -hmm. in with his accusations and shame and that kind of thing, but you don't have to receive it. No, you can remain free in the love of God. Yeah. One mm -hmm. thing that helped me was to realize, you know, the, the challenge of the enemy is that oftentimes he'll accuse you on the basis of a fact. Mm -hmm. Sure. I you did it. Did I did this, it. Right. right. That's, yeah. It, but was <laughs> learning how to take the, the enemy sword out of his own hand, kind of like after David knocked the Goliath. You know, you just did that. And I, would, and I had to learn to agree with my accuser while I was on the way to meet the judge, mm -hmm. just like Jesus <laughs> talked about. Right. And I had to agree with him and say, yes, I just yeah, I did, did that. that. But guess what? I have been justified. Jesus paid for me right. to be free from mm -hmm. that. And I shouldn't have done that. I don't ever want to do it again. I'm never going to do uh, it again. <laughs> because I put that off. That is not in me mm -hmm. anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. And you just walk forward. Brother Lawrence, he has a neat little quote, his little book of uh, mm -hmm. practicing, practicing the presence, presence of God. Mm -hmm. uh, he, it was, he, he was quoted as saying that when I sin, I simply tell the Lord, that's, I'm sorry, that's all I can do without you. <laughs> and, he's, and then he would say, so I'll put my eyes on you again and begin and carry on with his fellowship with the Lord. It was just that simple. Mm -hmm. um, the blood of Jesus never stops speaking a better word for us, brothers and sisters. Um, and that is the foundation. As we learn to walk in this power, learn to fly this jet, right? <laughs> uh, listen, if you, if you crash, it isn't the end of the story for you. No. Uh, just just get back up. Uh, keep walking. It's yeah. about uh, learning to walk in Christ uh, and not in the sin that was yours, but it's no longer yours. Mm. Praise be to God. Well, brothers and sisters, thank you so much for joining us today. We really enjoy uh, fellowshipping together and to being able to pass that out to you so that you can be encouraged as well. If this encourages you, we uh, want to encourage you, hey, uh, share this with other people uh, mm -hmm. so that they can find out about this as well. And uh, meanwhile, if you'd like some additional resources, you can check out our website, fullspeedimpact.com. Uh, I've got our online academy, which is our online mentoring program. And there's a lot of new, uh, a lot of books, uh, resources. In fact, I just released uh, a new, a new uh, devotional. 40 day devotional called Deeper Daily mm -hmm. 40 Day Journey uh, into the Fullness of Jesus Christ. And that's available on Amazon, both in Kindle and pa paperback. So I encourage you to check that out as well. Meanwhile, we'll be back with another uh, podcast every Friday at noon. We release one. Uh, and so uh, we uh, will look forward to speaking with you again then. Meanwhile, walk in the fullness of Jesus Christ and impact the world around you.